Huh. All right. Just a disclaimer. I didn't know we was recording today. I did know we was recording today. But I didn't know it was on film. So, you know, nigga got a man bun going on. But <laughs> welcome to Hello Black. Episode, Episode 105. 105. 105. For your ass, man. I'm proud. I'm happy. This is, I can say this is, well, in, in two days ago, when we or three days ago when we planned this, I felt really excited to record it. This morning, not so much, but not because of the content, just because that was life, three days ago. You know how life, life You know, happened. life changes, different emotions, different. <laughs> three days for a nigga with functioning anxiety, that's a, that's a lifetime. But as I'm reading the outline, I am re-excited, if that's even a word. I am excited again. We can make up whatever words we want, bro. Fuck English, nigga. We make up our own words, nigga. I got to start taking this on-camera shit a little bit more serious in terms of, like, the clothes that I wore. That's how I feel, nigga. You saw me. I just woke up. You feel me? I had a hoodie on that I slept in. My hair was looking fucking many. I'm like, all right, I need to throw a shirt on. Throw a shirt on. Now I'm over here. That's why I had to give a disclaimer. But, you know, I still look beautiful. Good job, Blake. I want to give another disclaimer. Um, You know, there's that time of year in the Bay Area where the pollen is flying through the air and the air is dry and it's windy. And so my allergies have been tweaking for the last, like, six or seven days. So if you work for an allergy company and you want to sponsor us, if you work for Claritin or Allegra or whatever, hit us up. I mean, I just don't want to just be (laughs) coughing and sniffing. I mean, I... You know, I'm just giving that disclaimer. I'm gonna try my best to to hold my it in. My eyes held itchy and shit. And then Jack can do a good a good job of. Uh, I'm pretty sure if she wanted to, she can make a blo- a blooper reel of me coughing and sniffing today. But she'll have that footage because she's gonna edit this out. Now you're giving her that idea. I'm not mad. I'll come for you. I like laughing at myself. She's gonna sometimes. say Happy Roller Day and post it on. I like <laughs> post, laugh, post I like laughing. Post an outtake to you. Myself. <laughs> Man, it's your birthday month, bro. How you feeling, bro? Used and abused. <laughs> Same way I feel every July, <laughs> in June, in May, in April, in March, in February, yeah, in January. Nah, I'm juiced, bro. It's wild because I was like brushing my teeth this morning. I'm glad and you I'm brushed like, your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. like, what are you insinuating? <laughs> Hot breath in this fucking I, studio. I brush no, my teeth. <laughs> uh, but now nah, I was like, damn, 29. Always wonder what it would be like to be. I think we. I don't know. When I was, I don't think I thought about getting older that much as a kid. Um, I don't know what the reasons for that were, but. But you think about like when you were a kid, twenty nine is so fucking old, damn near in your mind, and you know the way you process and think about age. Yeah. Reality, it ain't. But as a kid, you for sure. And like I know niggas hate when you know we make everything about anti blackness and about politics and shit, but like really. For a multitude of reasons, just a lot of young niggas don't be thinking about getting older for one. You feel me? You get... I had, I got partners that really been in jail since they was 18, 19 years old. You feel me? Then I got partners who didn't even live to see 18, 19. Uh, and then just like, even if that's just your close, your close like friends or family circle, then you just think about like the niggas from your neighborhood, the niggas from your city who you just don't, you know, who again fall, you know, victim to the same shit I just named. They're going to jail at a young age or, or dying. Uh, and, and so... Yeah, I just never really thought about getting older like that. And then on top of that, if we add like the elements of of poverty and being black and shit, you also grow up hella fast. You know what I'm saying? It's like the shit that I the shit that I'm doing right now in terms of like taking care of myself, I've been doing that for a long ass time. You know, my mom had me and my sister at before she was I think like 22 or 23. So for me, my mom had me when she was 17, and she had my sister I think when she was 20. And so I remember doing shit like taking us to. Um, to school, you feel me on the on the bus, just us two. I remember her like my mom like walking me and my sister like three blocks, and then me and my sister walking the other four blocks, and my grandma would be on the porch waiting for us at like five thirty in the morning. You feel me in the yeah. dark? I remember for me. Then my mom started going to like junior college when I was in elementary school, uh, through middle school, and so like cooking for myself. You know what I'm saying? And then at my my great granny house, it was. Like, nigga, shit, they was 75 years old. They had just raised multiple generations. By the time me and my sister came around, it was like, oh, y'all niggas figure it out. And then my granny Jackie was working and shit in Pleasanton. So 
the shit I'm doing right now, yeah, it's just if washing my own clothes, feeding myself, nigga. With it, all the other shit that comes with adulthood, taking myself to my own fucking, uh, you know, doctor's appointments or whatever, just like maneuvering through the city the best way I can, and then also trying to show up for my uh, my siblings and shit, or you know, the younger folks in my family. That shit I've been doing for hella long. So it, now it's, my knees and back and shit just hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and now I be laughing with my cousin, his nigga Kenny, talking about yeah. Now like we. Every haircut is getting closer to being your last haircut and shit. <laughs> so it's little shit like that. But I feel like I've been this age for hella long, bro, in terms of like whatever responsibilities I have. And then just battling capitalism. You feel me? Like that's, again, I mean, trying to. Niggas be joking like Grandpa the Wins here, <laughs> Paw Paw and shit. Niggas like, really be joking. I had to grow up hella fast. But it's like, bro, you had to <laughs> grow up hella quick and have a hella responsibility. <laughs> hella so yeah, fast, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you but, might be leaving the party a little bit earlier than everybody because you're tired of your back hurt. Bro, oh God. But I, I'm, I'm juiced though for, for my party. You yeah. feel me? Like, we're going to try to party as safely as possible, but I'm about to have all my siblings in one spot. Like, I don't think that's ever happened. Like, ever in my entire life, ever. You I'm got a hell of siblings too. Yeah. I'm about to have every single one of my siblings in one spot. My granny's going to be there. You know, I often have PRA and people's programs in there. It's so like the niggas who I did near live for is all about to be under one spot. So I'm juiced about that. We're going to have some good food, you know. Hopefully, you know, Uncle Earl come through with that Thai Keisha. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm juiced, bro. Man, 29, bro. Roll a day. You ain't a cancer, you a... Who knows at this point? <laughs> <laughs> The niggas who Everyone I trust. Everyone tell you as a cancer, then they're like, nah, you a Leo. For like 27 years. The niggas who I trust with astrology, though, so like Raven, Bobby, I think those are the two people who really be into that shit that I know. And they, they was like, Leo. They say I'm a Leo, yeah. No. So, some fire sign energy coming from hell black for y'all asses, nigga. Aries and Leo, you know what I'm saying? I'm just for real day. I say on Twitter, I say I feel like that's about to be my birthday too. <laughs> I feel like, bro, I'm, I really, that's I'm what, hella juiced. That's what I feel like is all my people is a celebration for us all, bro. About to be turned up, but you know we got a good, good episode in store. You feel me? This is, I think, a multitude of topics that have been going on around Oakland versus you know charity versus political organizing. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of good shit going on. Uh, a lot of good things to talk about. You feel me? Even this uh, quote unquote budget that's happening in Oakland, which you know, if you're in Oakland, you probably heard about the quote unquote increasing of funds being framed as defunding by some people. Um, so we're going to get into that, but, you know, we got some good shit to, to talk about. We should probably really just start into. there. Shall what we? was that, like two weeks ago? Yeah, I think two weeks ago, three weeks ago. You know, so f- for those who might have seen it go viral um, on the Internet, you know, talking about this was a win for the community, um, talking about the re quote unquote allocation of funds or whatever. Um, you know, some organizations acting like, oh, this is a win for the defund the police movement. Um, the last time I checked, if you increase the police budget by $9 million, that isn't a fucking win for the people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And there was, a, I believe, $18 million in funds that are also going to go to, quote unquote, violence prevention that is ran by the same city of Oakland that is funding the police. Right. Um, so still state run violence prevention programs, which in itself sounds like a pretty big contradiction. <laughs> How is the state going to run some violence prevention programs when the state is a violent one to begin with? If we being real, you feel me? If we having a real scientific analysis, you know, but some people calling this saying it was, you know, a victory for activists and organizers who've been working to defund the police. And as a nigga who worked <laughs> to defund and abolish the police, this was no win for yeah. a revolutionary nationalist, for a pan-Africanist and the principles and ideologies that govern that. Yeah, I, that's why I just think language like, you got to be careful with the language you use, and you also have to be really objective so we can look at what's happening from a scientific point. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so, hey, I mean, I, I could get how people call it a win, but it's like, on what, what, is the, what is the scale that we measure in here? What do we claim as a win? What do we claim as a victory? For me, claiming a victory when the police is going to be funded even more than before while also giving, quote, unquote, these alternative services you strengthen the state you feel me so if you do the math <laughs> you feel me like from a quantitative from a quantitative standpoint right you get opd whose budget is over 300 billion and now you have this uh what is what you is you said other, 300 million right 
I thought it was 300, yeah, 300, my yeah, bad. 337 yeah. million? Something like that. I think it's something like that. Yeah, I think I, I said billion, my bad. 337 million. Um, in comparison to what are they calling these services now? Violence prevention. Which is now has $18 million. Yeah. Like 300 million in comparison to 18 million. And we know those violence prevention office, they work closely with OPD. And add the context of all the other systemic capitalist racist shit that's already still in place right yeah. what is that in comparison to 18 million it's, it's not much uh, and so yeah it's just it's not it's not fair to like I, for me that's a misleading that's like misleading the people to make a statement like that it's misleading the people for sure and i think it's, it could have just been framed other, another way like we can acknowledge two two things can exist we can acknowledge like yo we just got 18 million fucking we chipping away at this but at this OPD budget. You feel me? We got 18 million going from it allocated to now these alternative mental health services. I can't remember words you use, but like we got 18 million chipped away, and we gonna keep fucking fighting. But let it not be. Let us not let it, let it be clear that OPD still has a three hundred over 300 million dollar budget allocated yearly. Yeah, and this is just addressing the politic. This is addressing and, and making sure that people is on the same page. At least if you feel me from our own fucking analysis. And we, we, you feel me? We, we got to have decisions. analysis so you can have a decision yeah. like, oh, is this actually a win or not? Because, you know, you had people saying today city council gave much needed hope to the organizers, mental health advocates, organizers, faith leaders, and working families across the city working to defund the police and invest in community. I can tell you right now, OPD still having a $337 million budget does not give me hope. Which they increased from last year. Yeah, like... That does not give me hope. That don't give me hope. That does not give me any hope at all. And to provide the context, they had it was twenty because OPD got another seven million, right? They got uh, an additional nine million, and then so it was was eighteen plus nine, twenty seven. Yeah, so it was like I'm trying to. So it was like twenty seven. It was like twenty seven million dollars that hadn't been allocated anywhere yet. That was yeah, going to be increased. That was going to go to the police. That was going to go to the police. And what they did was say, "Okay, now nah, we'll give y'all 9 so you get this increase in 9 and we'll give 18 to yeah. mental health services." And that's the That's what that's, happened. That's from the a basic yeah, level, from like, basic we, level that's, like, what that's just like not the semantics, not what people think what happened. There were 27 million extra dollars that was supposed to go to OPD. They said, "No, instead we'll give y'all we'll increase your shit by 9, not the full 27 and we'll give the other 18." To mental health services, that is not that by definitions that is not defunding. It isn't defunding, and that is <laughs> that is not defunding. And some might make a straw man argument saying, "Oh, Blake and Delancey, uh, y'all want money, more money to go to OPD." It's like, no, we're not saying that at all. I don't want to get any of it. Like if we talk, <laughs> if we talk, like if, okay, let's say we are advocating for defunding. Then what I stand for means I don't want them to get any extra money. Actually, I want them to lose money. That's what defund means. Defund doesn't mean you stay at zero. It doesn't mean not like we just keep what we had last year. That's not defunding. Defunding is not okay. We're not gonna give all this extra. We're gonna yeah. give this somewhere else. No, defunding is we pulling, pulling resources from you and pumping them into the alternatives. Yeah. So no, I'm not gonna thank city council. No, city council didn't give me no goddamn hope. Not even the quote unquote progressive. They didn't give me no fucking hope. Why? And what is my why, well, why would I? Why, why would I thank them when the police budget went up nine million dollars just because they directed eighteen million that would, to non mental uh, to non police services? But how do those non police services work? Is also a question because we know hand in hand that the Department of Violence is standing toe in toe with OPD and for us marching with OPD. So what does that really mean? You feel me when we talk about oh an increase in social services and these social services which I've seen with my own goddamn eyes come outside with the police. And they be driving police like vehicles. I'm like, bruh, I'm seeing a social service person come out <laughs> and they have lights on <laughs> like they a police officer. So what, what does that mean when oh, we're funding social services when the social services is also acting like the police? I mean, it was like you know what about a couple years ago, right? When excuse me, when it was all that. Remember, like the increases of homelessness services in Oakland like that was on the ballot or whatever. And then you got through the research of what that included. It was like nigga. They more was police having, for the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like more police uh, yeah. eviction support and shit like that. It was like nigga, I'm not, you know, like let's. What does this mean? And let's define. Like so, even okay, now I want to know as, as an organization like us or niggas who believe in like programming. Like, okay, like I want to see the what program is going to be laid out for this because I know we had conversations with folks who are doing mental health services. They 
are marketing them shits and they aren't even at the 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 standpoint of dispatching it. Like this is not an attack, bro. We just making an analysis. Like it's that I'm not downplaying anybody's work, but if if I'm talking to organizers who was like, yeah, you know, this is our program and it's being marketed as a certain way, but this is like, okay, yeah, we People's Breakfast Oakland. You know, we planned to do like yeah, we're people. We're, we're, we're people's breakfast, Oakland. We're planning to do this, 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 and this, but you know we ain't fed nobody yet. Like, well, there ain't no alternative. If people's breakfast, Oakland, just receive at the at at the start of our shit, if we receive millions of dollars without, without having a plan of distribution, or no, we've been marketing people's breakfast, Oakland, but we haven't distributed a, a single meal. That's misleading the people, in my in my opinion, bro. Like that's misleading. I've presented myself as something i've got y'all behind something but i have yet to take the action yet and as niggas who believe in scientific socialism who believe in analyzing programs and analyzing steps based off based off both quantitative and qualitative data like i just that just don't sit well i just i feel like that's misleading the people because also the people are entrusted like okay if you presented this or you like provided we, this you provided the yeah. service or this service exists or acting like city council gave us hope to organizers that is again in my opinion, that's misleading people. Why would they give me hope when they're increasing the budget to the police? Why? And if we understand Nkrumah and we understand neocolonialism and we understand imperialism and we understand fascism and we understand the welfare state, we know that the state will always give, give you some crumbs to appease you while also strengthening the state. This is a perfect example of that. A and, perfect yeah. example of that. I'm going to send Jax this little graphic that Nkrumah got. You feel me? It's <laughs> yeah. like legit as movements happen, the state will use funds from imperialism, <laughs> from colonizing the world, to fund the welfare state at the expense of the global south to give us things like mental health services, right? To appease workers here so that we don't actually revolt and actually have revolution. That's why George Jackson himself said, Reform? <laughs> what is reform as another word for fascism? You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's really what's happening. Is this is the increasing of this welfare state, a universal base universal basic income that uh, Libby Schaff is piloting in the East Oakland. It's all this shit is a fucking welfare state being built, a neoliberal welfare state. It's fascism, not freedom. It ain't freedom. <laughs> it ain't independence, and it's not sovereignty. And that's the analysis that we're having as revolutionary yeah. nationalists, as pan-Africanists, is we want freedom, independence, sovereignty, self-governments to make political decisions over our lives. And as new Africans, we build decolonization programs that offer up the alternative that is separate from the state. That ain't fed by the state. <laughs> that ain't getting money by the state. You know what I'm saying? That is a clear alternative from the state that is building towards freeing the land from your own American control. So it's again, this is when you have an analysis based on a politic and you put in a politic in command, it ain't about no ego. And that's it's about what is the politics saying about what is happening right now in the city of Oakland. You feel me? It's saying about Blake, <laughs> saying about Hella Black, saying about don't it is about us because we <laughs> it is our lives, you know what I'm saying? But this is about what this ain't our put personal in the, opinions. And in a personal <laughs> this ain't my feeling, like <laughs> This is it's about opinion, putting the, it's opinions rooted in objective realities and facts and analysis and, and that's scientific facts. It's yeah. gonna be people who hear this and be upset with us. People who we might have worked with before. People who shit our elders, fucking young folks in the community might hear this and get upset. But it's like we tell you what we stand for. We tell you the ideologies and the principles that govern our thinking and govern our work. Revolutionary Pan Africanism, revolutionary nationalism, and our metric of of fucking analysis is scientific socialism. Like. The the shit that we just brought to y'all, the people who are pushing it, go ask them what their ideologies are. Go ask them what governs their organization. Go ask them what they're using to make their analysis. We believe in scientific socialism. Again, and if they push the same thing, then it's not adding up. You can't reform the state. You can't reform the state. Reform is always a cycle of fucking punishment, a cycle of making the state stronger, a cycle of the fucking welfare state being continued and continued to build. You can't reform a plantation. You got to abolish the plantation. That's a fact. That's a scientific fact. You know, there, ain't, there, ain't, there ain't no arguing. We've lived reform. Everything we've lived is reform. <laughs> they reformed the plantation into a prison. That's why you got Angola State Prison now. 
or if, I don't know if it's a federal prison or what, but you got Angola as a fucking prison that used to be a plantation. That was reform. And this will happen. This is what you want to call this reform. Increasing money to the police and giving violence prevention some money as well. When if we look at the, the, the scientific fact, every single year, OPD goes over budget. Why? Overtime. Guarantee you they're going to kill another African this year. Guarantee there's going to be some protests. Guarantee the motherfucking pigs is going to, you feel me, fill up their piggy bank. And guess what that's going to mean? More funds to OPD. So we're talking about imperialism here. <laughs> we're talking about colonization. <laughs> we're talking about this shit easy white bad. supremacy, bro. This, like, easy this shit bad. ain't finna go down through reform. The way this shit will crumble is by building sustainable programs that build towards decolonization. Sustainable programs outside of the state that offer people a true alternative, not an alternative sponsored by the state. <laughs> not mental health services sponsored by the state. But when we organize outside the state as nationalists, as revolution, revolutionary nationalists, that's how we build. Look, at that's bro, how trying we to get, get trying to trying to get your st- your fucking captive, nigga, your fucking slave master, nigga, ain't finna co-sign your freedom, nigga. At that's the like, end of the like, day, blood, it's like the shit. image of like if me and you was digging a hole and we digging them back to back, we shoveling dirt into each other's shit. That's what reform be reminding me. Of. And then you have a tractor, <laughs> yeah, the United States tractor dumping more dirt into it. <laughs> <laughs> And th- At the same time, <laughs> yeah. For, for the folks that's, you know, it's gonna be people who hear this and they're gonna get upset because they, for them, we attacking their personhood, and it's like, nigga, we're not attacking you as a. We person. haven't, we're we haven't named names, we haven't named organizations. We just naming exactly what was said. And I w- again, you I feel me? Ask- we naming exactly what would happen, what was said, reading quotes. You know what I'm saying? So that the people can make an informed decision and educate themselves based on what is happening in this city. Or you can make a, you can come back with an informed like. Or you have to say, well, what I meant was this. I can't go off what you meant. I can only go off what you said. And so, again, if you're pushing, this is a big win for, this gives us hope. This is a, a, a step towards, or this is defunding. It's not defunding. $25 million, $27 million was allocated. They said, now nah, we're going to give 18 over here. We're going to increase this by nine. Increasing and defunding cannot exist simultaneously. They cannot. So this ain't a win towards, or this don't give us hope towards defunding. Yeah, the they can't. Like, and by definition, that's not the what city happened. council didn't give me no fucking hope. And so you got to just judge things by not what you feel. You have to judge things by the objective data that's presented in front of you. And that's what we doing with this. So no, OPD was not defunded. No, as niggas who organizing, it does not give me hope. They still exist. They still have three hundred at least. This is not including overtime. They have at least three hundred and thirty-seven million dollars at their disposal to do what they were designed to do: protect property. <laughs> Mind you, we only talking about OPD, nigga. Do you know how many police departments actually run through Oakland? We also talking about the CHP, nigga. Through Alameda we talking County. about Alameda County Sheriff, nigga. We talking <laughs> about Oakland How BPD Oakland, uh, Housing Authority, <laughs> BPD, BPD be running through North Oakland, pulling niggas over. Like, what are we? What are we really talking about? Yeah. State police. What's a tank to a hotline? Like, that's what I've been trying to get niggas to understand. You talk about hope. Like, what's a tank to a hotline? What's armored cars to a hotline? What's, what's fucking how many, what, how many, however many officers they got on the payroll, what's that to five dispatchers? That's not even out right now. Mm-hmm. That's what I judge it by. Like, in theory, we're not going off. I can't judge a theory, bro, until I see it into practice. All I can judge is what's been presented in front of me, the practical, the objective material reality that exists. And every day that I go out there on Sundays, you feel me? Uh, yeah. niggas still sleeping in tents. That's not giving me hope. Yeah, I mean, shit. What's a five, five, six to a hotline? We gotta be. We gotta you be. Feel me? This nigga Ty got a piece he just wrote on like the power of language. You feel me? Like, bro, niggas. We talk about this all the time as an organization. We gotta be very conscious and careful of the words we use to not mislead the people. Words have meanings, and we don't get to. They of of I guess from like a lexicon def, a lexicon was like a dictionary definition and I guess even just from a world like material world right like words can shift based on context so we have to add, we have to look the meaning can shift based on context we have to look at context but we can't just be saying things to make them mean what we feel they mean like now nah, depending on the context this means this so no you can't make defunding mean what you want it to mean to make you feel good no you can't make. 337 in comparison to 18 million make you feel good. It's not a, it's not about what you feel, bro. It's about the objective material reality. 
Yeah. And that's all we can. And that's what we go off of. If you don't, if you don't like objective material realities, don't come to this podcast. And, and it's only gonna yeah. make you mad. It's only, <laughs> this is an anti feelings podcast. But, but what this we is gonna see, make you mad. What we seeing is just this rising class of quote unquote abolitionists who are actually reformists, who are actually assimilationists, who actually have ties to the Democratic Party. And uh, I think as my nigga uh, neoliberals, <laughs> my nigga Kamau say he said the Democratic Party is where movements go to die, or movements go to die in the Democratic Party. Because so they love it, real. right? The Democratic Party is a perfect example of niggas who like to talk about shit and then do the, the exact opposite. They're oxymoronic. They're contradictory to the fullest. Red and blue. You know they get to <laughs> pump up Bernie Sanders and then they get to go with a dash of Kamala. Like what the fuck are we doing here? I don't know what's happening. All I could do is go off the. We do know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Moral of the story: OPD did not get defunded. Words matter. Context matter. And if you want to see real change, you need to have a scientific approach, or else mm. the neoliberals will continue to pull the wool over your eyes and piss on you and tell you it's raining. But. Decolonization programs, those are real changes. Yeah. Anytime you build a program that is separate from the state, that's a real, you feel me, with a political objective, that's how we define change. <laughs> the, that is a great marker for change. It's a great marker the for change. The ideology behind it, the practice behind it. And the political objective. What is it moving towards? You know what I'm saying? And constantly reassessing for actual alignment. You know what I'm saying? Like, Really hitting that drawing board, like, yo, is this shit really working? That's why we fuck with scientific socialism. It trial and error. And error. Trial. Assessment. And error. Trial and error. Trial and error. Always looking, all right, what way can we improve this program? You feel me? How do we make this system work the best? You know what I'm saying? How are we how are we the most productive? And I'm glad we talk about know? ideologies and, and political objectives and decolonization programs because you know, I'm sure it's, this has been talked about on the podcast before, but where are we at? And this is this is the terrain in 2021, anyway, right? The as we look at the height of neoliberalism, these fucking nonprofits. You know what I'm saying? Like that, this is a, a result of it. Um, and here in Oakland, like it's so easy for the like there are there are nonprofits that are doing the work that we do in terms of meal distribution and there are nonprofits doing the work that we're aiming to do in terms of now us having this mobile clinic. There are nonprofits doing what we do in terms of uh community education, right? There are nonprofits doing what we do in terms of bail funds. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the political objective is what separates us and we do not want to be conflated and connected to or misunderstood with any of these organizations, bro. In groups, just because we have a, a you see it, the political ideology, the political objective, we pump down y'all throats every every chance we get. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of times it's you know these nonprofits, um, essentially is trying to put a fucking band aid on a gaping wound. They ain't trying to heal the wound. You know what I'm saying? It, it's this cycle of funding, this cycle of oftentimes state funding that ain't meant to solve the problem. You feel me? That ain't meant to cure the fucking disease at hand of, of white supremacy, of capitalism, of imperialism. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, a lot of nonprofits, they they doing this shit for feel good. You know what I'm saying? They doing it for charity. You know what I mean? But you can you can use it for good though. But yeah, and I was I, and I was gonna say also I think that some things start off. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the nonprofit sector was again created for specific reasons. It was created to, to colonize and to to pull niggas out of movement spaces because for one the movement don't pay that well, if it pay at all. Niggas get small stipends and shit like that, right? Uh, and then also think about us this last year, how much money we missed out on because we weren't a 5013C. Like hundreds of thousands, probably millions of dollars because corporations are like, oh, we can't write this shit off. Yeah, so it's a way that <laughs> like, literally the system of capitalism has yeah. colonized how you can do this work, how you can serve people for free. Then there's you know po then there's political limits on what you can say. So even if you do our nonprofit that's like, you know, fuck it, we gonna we need access to this money and we're going to say what we're going to say. You probably won't be around for long. You can try it. <laughs> you can see it. You probably won't be around I for think long. Uh, community movement builders in Atlanta, you know, they've done a good job of showing how you could use a nonprofit for, for good. You know what I'm saying? 
the thing is about capitalism, you gonna get your feet wet in it anyway. You know, we at LLC right now. But I mean, shit. how else you gonna fund them? How else you gonna like movements take funds? You think about the Panthers, them niggas was outside every day. She even think about the nation throwing outside. parties, selling bean pies, you know what I'm selling saying? newspapers. Like, outside, and it's it's hard. It's hard, and it's it's hard to raise money for sure. And and them grants be. It, they they are they are a huge resource and again you think yeah. about the work that we sometimes grants be controlling people you know what yeah. I'm saying so it's like knowing that as well like you know if, you gotta have your fucking weekly report of what you did where the money <laughs> went you know what I'm saying like you talking about building any type of revolutionary front what does it look like to have your work monitored that way monitored by a, a <laughs> NGO that is actually ran by the State Department <laughs> you know and that, that's. If I'm lying, I'm lying, but I ain't lying. But Even then the there are those ones us. that are just actually in the way. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Who are strictly feel good work, doing it for themselves, and they have have no desire to see the system that has forced them to exist to be, to abolish. You know what I'm saying? Like I I want food co ops, and I want free food programs, and I want free clothes programs, and I want community learning to exist. I don't want the conditions that we are doing them now to still exist, though. Like niggas be like talking liberation, but don't have you can't. They have no analysis on capitalism. You know what I'm saying? They have no analysis on colonization. You keep hearing people over oh, Black Lives Matter, Black Liberation, Black Freedom, but they never have anything that points to the causes of this work. All we need to have, uh, you know, is anti motherfuckers be anti police, but won't even say like abolish all pigs. Fuck all pigs. So, oh, you shouldn't call cop a pig. <laughs> you know, people be, uh, you know, w- wanting to work with the houses, but will not, or came to advocate it and serve the houses, but have never mentioned the capitalist, imperialist conditions that have led to this. And that's an easy way you can differentiate your work from charity versus the actual political de- decolonization program working on free land. Because that charity ain't going to point to capitalism. That charity ain't going to point to colonialism. That charity ain't going to come for the Democrats that is putting our people on the streets. That Charities is putting do bare our minimum. Elders. Charities require no sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? And Philanthropy. That's philanthropy. Yeah. Like it's, Just feel good. Make yourself feel good. Have your little dinner. Most of the money not going to programming. You know what I'm saying? It'll go to talent, a.k.a. like the executive board, the the whatever workers you got on but most of the the majority of the shit is not going to programming and sustaining the work yeah it ain't like if you look at a lot of these you know shoot blm had what 90 million dollars they raised and what political programs do they have that are serving the people how many meals have been fed you feel me how many clothes been put on people's backs how many shoes been put on people's feet and, and we mentioned you know charity being rooted in like kindness or whatever but like Charity is just also an extension of capitalism. Yeah. You feel me? It's an extension of, oh, I exploited people through my job, and now I need a tax deduction, so I'm going to do charity. You know, Some people do it for real reasons, and they want to actually get back and support people. But a lot of these motherfuckers is philanthropists washing their money. At the the end highest of the day. act you can do of giving back is- like, is- Why is Rockefeller <laughs> considered a fucking philanthropist? A motherfucker is a billionaire. He should not exist. He might even be a trillionaire. Who knows? I just think you know that's, what I'm saying that shit should not exist. I think that's just a low bar because I feel like if you truly do love your people and truly do want to see people sustained and empowered and free, wouldn't you take those resources to dismantle again the systems and structures that led to them needing your help? What what higher act of love can you give that's than enough. self than sovereignty? What is, like what like then creating the conditions for people like, bro? To you don't got to be a destiny. fucking quote unquote philanthropist. You could actually just make your shit a co op. But no, what Rockefeller got all his money from what oil and shit? I don't know. I don't know Rock- about Rockefeller that much. I know they're like one of the wealthiest <laughs> families or whatever. Slavery, slavery, <laughs> exploitation. Uh, but yeah, I was gonna say something around like kindness, right? And I think you know, nigga, kindness exists in decolonization programs. Love exists in decolonization programs. Like yo, my nigga, I love you. Here's a here's a resource I'm gonna share with you. And at the same time, I'm sharing these resources. I'm actually I'm also working actively, even when I'm not providing this meal for you. To tear down the systems that again create the conditions for me to have to come out here and feed you while you on the street. That's love. That's kindness. Not uh, let me do this bare minimum. Every now and again, I'm gonna do this bare minimum. I mean, real love, real revolutionary love is decolonization programs because it's attempting 
to have political self-determination, autonomy, and independence from this capitalist state, this racist state that oppresses us every single day. That is the highest form of love. So when you was building a nation and you work in a free nation, those decolonization programs is an integral part. You feel me? You can't just be like anti this, anti that. It's like, what are you for? Yeah. What are you building? You know what I'm saying? We could talk about the man all we want, but if we ain't finna put in the work to build political autonomy, we ain't ever gonna be free. You know what I'm saying? And that's what decolonization programs are. It has a political objective. It is nation building in its highest form. We're acting as a nation. We're doing this as a nation to free ourselves from this Euro-American control. At the end of the day, that's that's what we're doing, is trying to free the land. You feel me? Have real autonomy, real self-determination. People always want to talk about, you know, all these, you know, other countries in the world and like, you know, free Palestine. It's like, all right, yeah, free Palestine, but nigga, if you're trying to work to free Palestine, work to get independence here in this country and destroy the imperial core. Yep. You feel me? Don't just talk about it, nigga. Be about that action. But again, and build pro- programs. <laughs> that is actually alternatives that is rooted in revolutionary nationalism to free the land. Otherwise, what is we doing? You know what I'm saying? And it, it isn't, we, we got a big enemy ahead of us, but we're, we're, freedom is possible. Freedom is possible. Folks just got to start doing the real work to connect the dots. And we're a living imperialism. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we're a living example of what it means to start small. We still a small organization. We ain't huge. Very small. Very small. You feel me? But if you're dedicated, take the right steps, reading, reflecting, growing, internal self-growth, this shit is possible to feed 30,000 people. You feel me? To build a, a health clinic, to have a bail program, you know what I'm saying? To have a grocery program. All these things are possible if you take those steps and do it outside of the state. And creating in a way that allows the people to sustain themselves, bro. Like I don't understand. That's that charity shit. Charity be be pigeon feed, be pe- bird feed, motherfuckers. Like no, the 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 complete goal isn't self sustainability and self determination. It's like I'm just trying to give you enough to keep surviving. Like nah, nigga, we trying to give niggas. You know, while we we can give you what you need to survive right now, while simultaneously, nigga, creating the, creating the conditions for you to thrive and control your own destiny. I'm trying to bird feed nobody. Come on. But that's what these niggas do. They'll feed you a hot meal while simultaneously exploiting the workers on their on their staff. Like a Bezos, for example. <laughs> Explain to me why someone making that much and you see it happen in like small little co ops and shit, right? I remember there was that one uh I wish I knew his name, but I think he was up in Oregon or Seattle. It was like a tech company. And the CEO took like a big ass uh salary took, yeah. salary cut. He basically paid all his workers. Took like so everybody was making the same shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like Jeff Bezos has the conditions to where niggas all from the factory lines at Amazon to the truck to the truck drivers could be making thirty dollars an hour. And you will see a huge increase in quality of life. And guess what? Bezos was And capitalism don't even gotta be dismantled for that to happen. Like niggas won't even do the like you talk about that's the come on. Come on, man. And so it's like, what is what if what is Jeff Bezos giving, you know, five million dollars to uh, t- to kids studying coding have to? What is that in comparison when he has thousands of workers he's exploiting? Niggas can't get sick days. Niggas is working twelve hour. Niggas 12 is hour being days. monitored by fucking computers. Like I'm confused, bro. You know what it is. We know what it is. Impact way more lives. Just increasing the 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 hourly hourly wage of every worker he has. And he do that. Guess what he gonna do next? Increase the prices of everything on Amazon. I'll give you niggas thirty dollars now. Everything costs. That's capitalism for you, right? And lower the quality of the product too. But that's what I'm saying, man. But you know, that's just if that's they'll give you any excuse for exploitation under capitalism. That's all that's gonna happen. The wages go up, the prices go up. That's what's going to happen. Where the terrain? <laughs> yeah, man. Again, look at things with an objective reality. Don't be misled by the masses. And hold motherfuckers yeah. to a higher standard, bro. You know, and, and it's okay to do that. There's a vital propaganda wing that is pushing this out. You know what I'm saying? We think about Amazon and we think about all the uh, union organizing that's been going on and the pressures to quell it. Then, you know, you got to. Rappers, you know, doing shows uh, for Amazon and saying what Tyler Creator said. He said, fuck Amazon. 
eat the rich. You know, like, shut up, you bought toilet paper. Yeah, nigga. Niggas need to wipe their ass, Tyler the Creator, nigga. They need to wipe their ass. That's that victim blaming shit. Bruh. Nigga, like, that's why that's you say, <laughs> fuck Amazon, eat the rich. Yeah, niggas are saying, fuck Amazon, eat the rich. And you saying you a contradiction because you bought toilet paper off Amazon? Like, what kind of fucking logic is that, my nigga? It's not logic, but we know niggas like him don't use logic. They just, they just don't. Not when it's not beneficial. You know, and that's again, that's that old metaphor. You hate capitalism, but you bought food today, bro. You no, hate no, capitalism, no, no, no. but you bought fucking toilet Another paper, person bro. Doesn't understand how monopolies work. <laughs> you hate capitalism, but you bought some soap from Dove, it's bro. It's impossible to escape. <laughs> it's impossible to escape Amazon. Amazon doesn't just own Amazon. Amazon has fifty six percent of the e commerce market, nigga. Even if you that's ain't shopping, a monopoly. that's called a monopoly. If you ain't shopping Amazon, <laughs> nigga, you someone somewhere where you buying shit is coming from Amazon, nigga. Might not have the Amazon package, nigga, but nigga, you got that shit from there. So it's like my G just make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, a- Amazon put on a free concert, quote unquote free, for another tax we break. We paid for that. We paid for that. As much money as Jeff Bezos then got yeah. from niggas, they paid for that concert. Them niggas bought your album. They paid for that concert. Oh, Amazon put this on. Oh, so now, now y'all like Amazon, huh? My nigga, come on. It's propaganda. And I, I hate when niggas try to do that like that's like so manipulative of you like you think you call the niggas out and you got some basis in your in your shit but it's oh, like, you really thought you were really, doing something you're really the nigga who whose analysis is wrong <laughs> you are again blaming the poor for buying toilet for paper involunta- for involuntary participation into a system for wanting to wipe their ass <laughs> of global imperialism Bro, like, what that ain't cool. that shit was nuts oh, we gotta stop that. allowing that shit to happen bro like that shit ain't cool that's why you, mm, yeah, that, that shit, <laughs> that shit ain't cool, bro. It's really not, and it's it's sad. You know what I'm saying? Like a nigga like that is apparently, I don't know. He might have, he said he grew up poor, but again, you know what happens once you, once you get that much money. You know the nigga, he getting his bag. He, he producing shows and performing at the biggest festivals, number one albums. But yeah, y'all gotta stop letting people. I really want the poor to stop letting. The rich disrespect him like that and then make excuses for him. And then defend him. That nigga disrespected everyone's humanity. Like, oh, nigga, y'all hate capitalism so much, but yeah, look at you buying toilet paper, nigga. Like, that nigga really wants you to walk around with doo-doo hanging out. Oh, y'all shouldn't have came to the show if you had capital. Like, damn, nigga, I don't deserve lecture. I don't deserve uh, joy. Joy. A break. Time off. From being a worker. Like, I'm pretty sure the niggas who was in that show that worked for Amazon would have preferred a higher wage than that punk-ass free show by Tyler, the creator. But again, man, that's why we can't keep turning to these niggas. Celebrity these, culture. <laughs> Death to celebrity culture on the left. These both voluntary invo- and involuntary uh, agents of the state, known as celebrities, influencers, whatever words you want to use. I just don't get how niggas could constantly like disrespect your humanity. They always shove in. You get niggas who say tweets like, oh, if you're judging a millionaire, uh, if you if you roasting a millionaire. Or, you what the is, joke, too. You the joke, too. Like, nigga, <laughs> money do not make you better than me. Money don't make you smarter. Money don't mean I can't whoop your ass. But I guess in terms of capitalism, again, we like we again have been associated to we have been conditioned to believe that you know whoever thrives at capitalism is the smartest. They're the most moral. So does the that strongest. mean? Does that mean y'all fucking worship these white people because white people own what ninety nine percent of the land? White people own the means of production. White people enslaved your ass. So you're supposed to celebrate them because they got fucking money. They're somehow smarter than us. Because they oppress us. And again, that's refusing to look at context. How did they get that money? (laughs) From slavery. (laughs) Through exploitation? Exploitation. Prisons. Corporate monopolies. That's why I ain't praising them niggas. I ain't praising them at all. But death to celebrity culture, even on the left. Even your favorites, celebrities who, who claim to be leftists, but ain't out here doing no material work for the people. Ain't out here serving the people. That's that's my thing is like bro you people, I think motherfuckers always like well what is you doing like I'm doing the best I can with what I got and I, like nigga we also are holding these niggas to a higher standard they claim to know so much and they have all the resources why should why should a person with a million followers, um, however many thousands of dollars they're making every month however much influence they have why should they be 
compared to the average worker on terms of who's doing who was able to provide resources for the community. The nigga who has more resources should be held to a higher standard. I mean, we wouldn't have to worry about fucking getting funds if all these black celebrities, the multimillionaires, gave 10% of their income back to the people and back to the movement at bare minimum, 10%. Imagine that. Keep wishing. <laughs> I have a dream. I'm trying to find uh... that one day. <laughs> Black celebrities will give us for their money next, for the people. Our next shit, the next the Patreon question. Yeah, can you find? I'm not logged in on Patreon on this shit. I can't find it nowhere. I'm tired, bro. Am I making sense? Yeah, you're making a lot of sense, All bro. Right, I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it was a question around like dedication. I believe so. I don't even know. It's just showing all these people who took their pledges off or added new pledges. This is a good time to remind you to subscribe to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash HelloBackPod. How I'm supposed to trust? Everybody was talking about their revolution re- revolution ready, but like niggas won't even do the bare minimum. Like, go send this link to your partner and tell them to sign up for our Patreon. Come on, man. Do the bare minimum, my nigga. This shit don't even require no risk. No risk. Or you want people to be educated. Yeah, man. Do the bare minimum, bro. Pass some rebel. Niggas ain't doing this. I don't think you can have another. I don't think there's another platform that's talking this shit and then going out and trying to put it into practice and then coming back like, hey, yo, this worked. This didn't work. And oh, oh, yeah, we was wrong here, but they was wrong over there. I don't think that's happening. This type of reflection and intention. All right. Well, where do we go from here? Oh, we need a white intern. <laughs> <laughs> it's my white slave, Roach. Um, I think I remember, though, it was like a comment, though, right? It was saying yeah, it was like, like they wanted to hear us talk about something around like... Like, how do you build a dedication to, to the movement? How do you build dedication to studying and shit right that, like that, right? And, f- and, and for me, it, it made me think or, think about... Uh, the lifestyle politics. Lifestyle politics from free to land. Yeah. Uh, should, we define, should we define lifestyle politics? Yeah. Look right here. Boom. Cite so, 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 your sources. You know what I'm saying? Cite your sources. You know, this is the shit that's building and sustaining our works. And right here. You know, from this grew People's Breakfast Oakland, Revolutionary Suicide, Birth People's Breakfast Oakland. And the foundation for people's programs. Yeah. But this right here, we are on Liberators. This is what really lit a fire under niggas. This is how yeah, this right here. Ooh, I it's swear that, by this. That limited. Book. I swear by this book right here. But free to land, yeah. Oh, I think it's this. You found it's, it. We'll love to hear y'all talk about personal discipline and how that looks like in the movement. Thank you, Angel Lopez, our very valued Patreon patron. Come shout on. out to shout out to you. So they <laughs> sent that question, and it made me think about lifestyle politics. And I must have put the wrong page down. This is insane. Because they define lifestyle politics. In the, very, in the very beginning of the book, I believe. Well, I sent you a note with the questions anyway, so I can look I can look at them right now. Free to land, 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 free to land. Remember I shared a doc with you? Man, what the fuck? Like you shared so many docs with me a day, I don't remember which doc. This is insane. <laughs> There's a, I thought it was 139. You got page 139 on the notes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Lifestyle politics, becoming new people who live by liberation oriented ideas. I mean, yeah, this is a part of it, but I wanted to actually define it. And there's a section in the book that defines it. And I sent you a note yesterday, right? And so it, I think it was there. Yep, here you go. Boom. See, that's why I'll be writing in my books and shit. <laughs> Say right here, definition. I'm just going to show you all this little, little production thing we can do. We really be reading, you know, making notes, all type of shit. We take political education very seriously here at People's Programs. At Hello Black Podcast Productions, you know. <laughs> take it very serious. Okay, so yeah, that question from Angel talks about uh, dedication, right? And like what it looks like in terms of studying and organizing. Is that like the basis yeah, of it? We'll would love to hear y'all talk about personal discipline and how that looks like in the movement. So yeah, um, new Africans... 
like at the birth of the new African independence movement when niggas was, you know, making a shake out there in Detroit. Uh, they birth the ideology of new African lifestyle politics. And so the definition of that is, as the everyday practice of political ideology, lifestyle politics involves the constant interpretation, negotiation, and reproduction of ideas shared between activists, allowing new Africans to seek empowerment in the most quotidian aspects of their lives in the movement. Um, and then there's another note here in lifestyle politics as everyday, a section is uh, lifestyle politics as everyday assertions of self-determination. And it also says becoming new people who live by liberation oriented ideals. Um, and I feel like this is something that me and you just been talking about hella much over the last month, yeah. you know, or two after you got the book and then put me onto it, right? Um, and yeah, I, I'm glad that Angel asked that question because again, it's something that me and you've been talking about a lot. Um, I don't know. This shit is something that I've been to answer your question, Angel. It's a struggle, but there are certain things that uh, I, I believe that Blake and I have done a good job of, and it does help that probably that you know we live together, so we get to see each other constantly and like check one another. Like, ah, oh, nigga, I ain't gonna lie, you can or like, bro, I feel like I'm like not living up to the shit that I, you know, that I that I claim to that I want to hey, live by and by. I don't think you'll ever fully. Live up to the politics. I mean, no, you you, you won't know, for sure. Like you always are gonna make mistakes. You always you feel me. But it, it's that's part of being human. Yeah, but <laughs> you feel also, me? We ain't, we ain't a law. You feel me? But it's that we desire be, though. You gotta have desire. That desire yeah. can take yeah. you hella far. Like the desire to you don't want to be guilt ridden yourself and yeah. beating yourself up all the time to live to a, a standard that's not feasible and something that you that's help. some shit I be doing to myself is beating yeah. myself up on my mm. and shit. You grounded me a couple weeks ago and you was like nigga Jaleel told me don't look to him to be an example of a perfect Muslim. You know, that, that really grounded me. I'm like, all right, like, niggas is going to make mistakes. And it's wild because we say all the time, like, we learning and we unlearning. And in the process of learning and unlearning, you're going to mess up, right? But I think something that has helped us to get to the point is constantly, every day, grounding ourselves in ideology. And that's something that we're trying to do now in people's programs, right? Like, before People's Breakfast Oakland, reminding people this is a decolonization program. The purpose of this is not just to go out and, although one of the purposes are, is to, you know, feed folks the end goal here is revolution and us having the practice of sustaining a free meal program yeah. uh yeah yeah i think personal personal discipline is extremely important you feel me in terms of like building revolutionary culture you know what i'm saying i'm like i tell niggas all the time i can't trust you if you don't show up on time you know what Again, I'm saying? We talk if, about bare minimum things. If like, we make the bare minimum things yeah. that build trust within organizations, it's showing up on time to meetings. It's coming prepared to meetings. Uh, for me, personal discipline is reading. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in people's programs, we have different political education cadres where we read in every week. Our core team is reading a book all the time. You know what I'm saying? So we have different standards that we set. It's like, okay, my personal discipline is making sure I read. Make, making sure that I, I, I'm reading to understand the practicality and how to implement something too, not just reading to read, but reading to fully understand. Um, shit, another thing that helps me is just like the Islamic shit, really like fasting, Ramadan, that helped me move my personal discipline, you know what I'm saying, and, and staying disciplined in certain things, so just changing habits, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I'll just go vegetarian for a month just to have that personal discipline within my mind. You know what I'm saying? And really trying to uh, have full control. You know, I think that's one thing uh, Raj talked about. You know, it's like people think discipline is a, a negative thing. You know what I'm saying? Or our, our understanding of discipline oftentimes is negative. But it's like, nah, like to actually truly be free and you making every choice because you want to, you have discipline, which means you have more freedom. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it, it's really waking up every day and asking yourself for me. That's something I really try to do every day is like, what is my purpose? I might be feeling tired. I might be feeling drained. But like, what is my purpose? What am I doing this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, what am I like? What is my goal? You know, and really asking yourself, because if your goal is freedom, independence and revolution and liberation of new African people, you're going to try your, to live your life in accordance to that. So that and that's going to look different each day, right? Your best is going to look different. And, and it's training yourself, you feel me? Because it's a, uh, you was like, we in this whole sea of fucking capitalism of the most fucking distractions in the world. <laughs> like, we is in the fucking, we have the most distractions. We live in the most inhumane society possible. 
<laughs> that has ever known been ever, ever known to the human fucking race whatever we want to call ourselves there's gonna be a lot of distractions so like how are you training yourself you know for me i'm i'm now i gotta learn like how to take a break <laughs> i think that's part of personal discipline too you know because i'm like fuck i'm over here laying down and I'm, i find myself watching youtube videos on the movement <laughs> or i'm listening to a speech or some shit or i just start reading or something you know what i mean uh-huh. so but personal discipline that shit is you know it's like if we're talking about revolution Niggas need to be doing some type of weightlifting or physical exercise. Not on no fat phobic shit, but if you know, if you know your role, if your role is gonna be on the ground or front lines, you know what I'm saying? It's like that shit is important, you know? Being able to know how to throw a punch, you know, working out yoga, mind, body, spirit type shit. You know, that that helps me with my personal discipline. Um But I think the more I'm thinking about it is like sports really helped me build some of this personal discipline. So I playing sports at a high level. Um, so I feel, feel like I've tried to take some of those lessons out of that. Yeah. And build that into this new thing or this, you know, this organizing shit. Yeah. And I would say what what really pushes me to, to be, to make consistent efforts at being dedicated and disciplined is really having a f- full understanding of these ideological texts that I've that I picked up, right? And like reading about early new Africans, reading about Jalil Muntakim and his life, reading about Huey P. Newton and his life and and the Panthers, reading about Asada Shakur and her life. And it's just, if I'm going to be claiming the ideologies and politics that I've, you know, that I, that I watched them live out, if I'm going to be claiming the ideologies and politics of folks like Tere of, of Nkrumah, I just that's just something I can't take lightly. I feel you, like that's you can't play with them. that shit. It's, a, it's <laughs> you say New Africa, you know that you are making a commitment to people who fought before you, your ancestors, your elders still here, people who is New Africans who are still locked up. You feel me? New Africans who is in the shoe as we speak. That's why, I, yeah, it's it's a makes me emotional knowing yeah. what people have fought for. And I just can't. So play I can't with play that, with that. I, just, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't <laughs> claim that shit because that's can't play that's some it. fake shit, nigga. I ain't no fake nigga. I just, yeah, I just, I just can't do that. So that, that's what allows me to push. I'm like, bro, I'm about to really study this shit. Because if I'm be invoking their names and invoking their spirits for the for the folks that have passed on, if I'm be invoking their names for the people that are still here, for the for the folks that's behind bars who I'm constantly referring to, I just, it's, I don't know. You talked about spiritual shit with yourself and Islam. There's something inside of me that like it be speaking through to me when I'm like, all right, nah, nigga, you need to get back on track or. On the positive note, when I can just feel it coming to me when I'm trying to write, when we design a curriculum and stuff, like I'm like, oh, it's like these pages is jumping off the word to me, uh, or these these words are jumping off the page to me. Uh, and then I also think it's that kind of self work is important because it is easy to get lost behind group thinking and group work. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not making those, that, that's a huge thing in organizations. Yeah. I would say is, or even teams going back yeah. to teams is like you always gonna have that. Star player, star player, those captains, you know what I'm saying? And then a person who ain't putting in that work can, you feel me, get that championship. Or like, yeah, what happens if Blake isn't (laughs) around to like push me? What happened? You know what I'm saying? It's like that, that got to be inside of me. Even, you know, we reading Revolutionary Suicide. Huey was talking about like, and he was referring to like the the, uh, police patrols that they would do, right? He was like, we knew we couldn't patrol every single area of of the East Bay. We knew we couldn't do that, but it was just our job to, we knew that that kind of, Control will have to come from the entire community. We just want to lay the foundation and show them how to do it. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, fuck, I was just my train of thought. Yeah, Huey, Huey, Huey makes that point. And so, uh, that's that's what I'm trying to be on is just, I know I can't do everything. I know I can't be perfect, but I can at least set the best example that I possibly can. And I think something that you and I, talk about a lot is understanding the terrain. It's something that you and I talk about. It's something I talk a lot with Q is like understanding the terrain because we read, these, yeah, we, we read, we read these books and it's so easy to get, to place yourself in that, place your mind in that time where it's like, bro, this is 2021. We have never seen surveillance like this. I don't even think the Panthers would have saw like post them with this nonprofit world would look like, what this neoliberal world would look like, what this propaganda machine would look like, right? And so, we are not with social media and the CIA you know, operations on social media. We're not living me? in those times. Like yeah. the terrain is different, and so like I tell you all the time, like it would not make sense for you to take certain actions for you to for you to run yourself into the ground. If we talking about you need to be here 
for another 40, 40 years in the name of you making yourself feel good. Excuse me. Oh, shit. In the name of you, in the name of you making yourself feel good, right? Like, all right, I'm wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to every breakfast program. I'm gonna write every paper. I'm gonna lead every political cadre. I'm gonna lead every meeting. And it's just like, all right, nigga, you gonna run yourself in the ground for what? Just so Blake can say he felt good, but that's not what the movement needed at all because you didn't have a scientific analysis of the current terrain. You didn't have a objective reality of the current terrain. And so I think just again. Really grounding yourself in ideologies that you believe in, because those can give you simple guidances, right? Like, okay, I believe in revolutionary pan-Africanism. I believe in revolutionary na- nationalism. I believe in the work of people's programs that is going to aid the new African independence movement that is going to lead to sovereignty and self-determination. And then as time goes on, as you continue to read and get more guidance, as you continue to practice and organize and implement these things, you'll start, you know, the the... the You'll be better. You'll be better suited and better able, from a knowledgeable standpoint, to understand what it means to apply all this shit to the current terrain. Because you know it's twenty twenty one. It's not nineteen sixty seven, nineteen sixty six, when the Panthers were, were founded, right? Uh, but you, I think the number one thing got to be that to get right back to whatever to get finally circle back to Angel's point, right, where we hit all these different shits along the way. The number one thing got to come from self and understand. I think the biggest point that you and I both were making, Blake, is like we just don't take the politics lightly. You know what I'm saying? Like you talk about when you when you say things, you gotta try your best. When you ground yourself ideologies, you gotta try your best to bring them into into the material world and whatever that looks like. And some of this shit's gonna be drawn out right in front of you, like decolonization programs, like reading and learning. Um and some of it you're gonna have to do a little dive a little deeper into. Yeah, it's a lot of internal work that you gotta do. A lot of internal work that you have to do, and that comes from personal reflection. Um, taking care of yourself mentally, understanding when you might be projecting on people, you know what I mean? Um, Because, again, like, we as a severely traumatized, colonized people, you know, and a lot of times people show up into spaces, into organizing spaces like that. So it's it's important that you do that internal work, you know what I'm saying? Because you can read every book, you can go to every lecture, you can recite theories, but if you ain't doing those, that internal work, that deep work, that internal shit, that spiritual transformation of yourself, like, you ain't going to show up great in the movement, in my opinion. 